Alright, today I'm going to do a video on my thoughts on how to use a linear amplifier, high powered, properly. So, first of all, I hear a lot of talk about uh, bleeder resistors and when is it safe to um, uh, go inside an amp to test or um, replace a tube or to check stuff, you know, when the... Um, when is it safe or when the voltage is um, off? If you have a amp with a voltmeter like this one, right now it's on a five kilovolt scale. And uh, if you see the meter there, it's a little bit past four, uh, past four, and that's kilovolts if you can see right there with the reading. So this thing got 4,000 volts going through it. That's, that's death but people talking about how do you know when it's properly uh, uh, bled all the way down well every amp that I know of with a voltmeter on the amp like this one when you turn the amp off like I just did now you can see the voltmeter slowly going down that's because this one has heavy bleed in it or proper bleed and it's bleeding off the power of those capacitors in there as it gets lower it's slowing down because um, the lower the voltage the less resistance or less power is being bled but um, I always wait till it gets zero and it, then I still get my shorting uh, bar or my dummy stick and I still get it which I'm not gonna do in this video oh I definitely unplug it first too because if you playing around with this thing plugged in and even though it's bled if you accidentally hit that power switch and knock it on um, you're dead so I always unplug it you know the big amplifiers before I go in and uh, actually I'm going to do it now before I go in and take pictures so sitting the camera down and gonna unplug this guy it's a 220 direct line so don't want to be playing around with it <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go inside right quick with the camera and you see that red choke in the center of my picture there that coil that's a safety uh, choke or coil what that does, it doesn't do anything with power or matching or anything at all. All it is is like a safety device. And what that does is it passes RF right through like it's not even there. And that's hooked to the output uh, of this amp right uh, at the uh, vacuum relay. But what that does is, see those two caps right at the center there? those are the DC or plate blocking caps and from time to time those may short even though these are two good transmitting ones uh, in parallel for power but if one of them shorts if you have one and it shorts that 4000 volts we were are talking about those block the uh, DC volts but allow the um, RF to pass through so what happens is one of those shorts not only if the RF is going to go through that 4,000 volts is going to go through the relay because you got a key down and out to your antenna and 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 whatever else you got it connected to and you running 4,000 volts through your coax line and antenna it may come down and get you you know through the mic or or whatever you're touching and 4,000 volts can jump too so you definitely don't want to keep 4,000 volts you know uh, uh, or whatever your high voltage if something happens you want something to catch it and what that does it shorts it out right to ground and then it's gonna blow the fuse uh, or circuit breaker in the amp but a lot of CB amps don't have that you know they go on cheap and they like okay you know we don't need it uh, who needs safety so many CB amps if those um, plate blocking caps short out the DC is gonna hit uh, your coax and everything else and it may kill you so um, this ham amp here has a nice uh, DC uh, choke there to um, block that um, 
nice vacuum relay there blower um, your 8877 cool uh, tube well designed out but again um, you got the voltmeter here which many CB amps don't have and also you got a current meter over here which a lot of amps don't have and many amp uh, hams know you can tune a um, amp by a current meter dip or you can look at your grid voltage too and this one does have a grid meter here this is an alpha uh, high powered um, amateur radio amplifier so anyway we're gonna plug it back in and let it warm up again Doop, doop, doop. Yeah, we're gonna put it on the high side. Uh, we're not even gonna show it on the low. And this is keyed up by a foot switch here. Um, it's how we got it going to the back to key this up. We're driving it with the little uh, JB76, aka JB200 two piece. 28417 uh, tubes in it now I modded this one with a vario bias on the front and also it's got a tune and load like a uh, normal amp it has the, the regular JB 200s it's got a uh, fixed tune and then the load is a screwdriver adjustment there uh, doesn't have a knob so I modded this one with uh, a variable tune and put a knob on the uh, load so I can uh, tune it up with the tune and load on it um, so let's run the driver I'm gonna carefully reach over here and put the um, watt meter on the 200 watt scale I think I'm on peak so let's go to average and this guy should already be set up for Hello, hello. Did in about 15. Audio, audio. Swinging about 80, 90. This watt meter here is set up and calibrated to what a bird uh, watt meter does. So a lot of swing the way I got this uh, JB76 set up. This is my personal one, not for sale. My whistle's going. Audio. Audio. Talking about 8590. Swing. Like I say, dead can about uh, 12 watts right there. Probably doing about 150 or so peak. Let's see peak right quick. A lot of alpha's warming up. Audio. Audio. 200 peak. But very low dead key on it. So we're going to put it back on average and put it on the 2000 scale and the alpha ought to be uh, pretty warm right now. So we think we got everything ready 2000 watt scale on average. Hit the foot switch and key her down. Audio. 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 That's the plate current and that's the uh, voltage dropping. And over here on the 2000 watt scale of the watt meter, on a dummy load, mind you, no false watts, calibrated to a bird. It's dead keen a little under 100. Audio. Audio. And it's talking about 900, 1000. Whistling to about uh, 1100 or so. And again, that's on average, it'll do that all day long. Audio, audio, not keep kicking the plate meter too hard. Audio. And we gotta unkey it and put it over on peak right quick. I think I got that in there. Need another hand. Audio, 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 audio. Well, there it is on peak watts. Again, this is calibrated to a bird. Um, putting it in the corner. Audio. Audio. But one last thing I wanted to do in this video, because I got an amp with the voltage meter and the plate current meter, as long as you're applying voltage and current to that tube, 
or to the amplifier, that tube is uh, uh, taking or sucking or using that uh, voltage time to current. So it's running about 3,700 volts and audio talking up to about half an amp. Audio and 3,700 or, or so, or let's use 38 because it's easier to divide. Hello, hello, hello. At about a half an amp, that's 1,900 uh, uh, watts. Average, actually, um, on that too. And what happens is many people will mistune an amp. Like, I'm going to tune it down. You know, I don't, I don't want it to be 2,000 watts. You know, I'm going to take the tune and the load. It doesn't matter which one you do. A lot of people think they're, you know, using the load and they overcouple it. And they tune that way down. So let's say you tune that from 2,000 watts down to 500 watts. Um, what happens is these watts that are on that tube, again, as long as you got voltage and current, that tube is taking them watts. Now, if that tube is not putting those watts out for whatever reason, you got a high SWR or they're, they're feeding back or uh, you mistune it by tuning the tune or the load, doesn't matter which one, those watts are still being provided by that tube, but the tube is gonna eat them. Instead of going out, all the those watts that you mistune it, if you tune it down and tune it down and tune it down, those watts are going back into the tube or staying in the tube. So the tube is gonna eat those watts and overheat. A lot of people think they're doing it justice by tuning it down you know with the tune and the load don't ever 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 do that that's one of the worst things you can do for an amp always tune the tune and the load on an amp for the most watts that you could get so those watts won't be eaten by that tube and they'll go right on out out to your coax you know through your watt meter or in this case to the dummy load don't ever miss tune an amp if you needed to do less watts Get a driver with a variable or a, a radio with a variable and tune that down. So anyway, that's going to be it for this video of this Alpha PA70 amplifier. And again, tune your watts for maximum with your tune and load. Always, always, always. And when you turn the amp off with that voltmeter, Wait for it to drop out to zero, unplug it before you go in it. That's the way to say, stay safe. If your amp doesn't have a voltmeter in it, then um, oh well. Hope you got bleeders and then, you know, uh, uh, use your safety stick or chicken stick and and uh, bleed them voters down or, or wait, you know, half hour, hour before uh, you go down. But if you got a voltmeter, unplug it for safety. And wait for that to hit zero and then still use your your chicken stick to check and make sure that that voltage is discharged because just want you to use them amps properly and stay safe bye